a lot of a lot of Caucasian people right away don't trust black people. That's one of the biggest things that they don't trust us. Just because of our color. They've been bred and taught not to trust black people, you know, through their through their generations. So to keep your word right away proves that you a step above. What's going on, family? It's your guy, Chris D. And as you know, we are always someplace vibing where they say we shouldn't vibe. Today, we are in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm standing here in front of the Performing Arts Center, Fox City Staple. Appleton, I know you're like, where the hell is Appleton, Wisconsin? We're about 30 minutes outside of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Crazy thing is, this isn't the most we'll call it diverse place, that a brother like Chris D could be showing up to vibe, right? But what I do know is that there are some amazing black entrepreneurs here in this city that are being supported by communities that you would not expect. We got a chance to sit down with some of these awesome entrepreneurs. One very special to me, we'll get to that later. Hey family, we are so excited. We are talking about black businesses being supported in white communities. Wow. This is gonna get good, fam. Hey, stay locked. Guess the vibes. We love you. Right now, we're at the Cozy Corner Soul Food Restaurant, another business that's being that's thriving here in this community, being supported by those you wouldn't expect. I'm trying to get some chicken and waffles. We finna go in here and eat. Hey, listen, stay with us, stay locked, catch the vibes. Peace, fam. <laughs> That that gaze. You're right. You know that gaze that people give you when they kinda of looking at you like, should I hold my purse? Right. Or should I say hello? Which right. one should I right. do? You know what I'm saying? How about they kind of want to hit the button right away? Absolutely. Beep, 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 beep. Uh -huh, absolutely. <laughs> but we also talked about how at first conversation, how we were able to visually see that perception of you personally change. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. so maybe maybe talk to the people <laughs> about what it means when you have that first interaction, right? And to see that change of of, of, of you, of you as a black man. You know what I mean? What what does that give you to them, you know, in looking at the opposite? Well right away I understand that I represent all black people. Number one. Is that true? That's very true. That's true. I understand that because you got to understand some of these people come from smaller towns in Appleton that they never seen a black person Facts. until they went to college. Or I something. can't. I can't even count how many times. We you know what I mean? So, That's so true. we. I represent my whole race when I meet a white person. You know what I mean? I know how it may look to them or whatever, but right away, my understanding is because how many times you see a black person or a person of color do something you feel embarrassed All and you time. didn't even do nothing. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? But everybody doesn't have that mentality. Some people, it, you know right now, it's a me, myself, and I type of mind frame that people have. I don't care what she do. You know what I'm saying? But, I don't care what, what people think of me. You're right. You know? You're right. But see, the difference is we were raised to represent our own family. Right. Even on Facebook, I know I understand that I still represent the Davenport family. You know what I mean? So we were raised that way, so it's easy for me now to just understand that I represent all black people as well. Right. But just from a from a from a, from a general standpoint, um, with what you're doing here in, in Appleton, Wisconsin, um, I think it's enough. And not just because we're brothers, you know what I'm right. saying? But right. I've watched the struggle. Right. I've watched it from Day one. Day one. Part of the struggle. Part of real part talk. of the struggle. I don't like to I don't like to <laughs> No, you play a real crucial part of the struggle with us, bro. We we was together. 
a hundred percent. And and what we saw was not only exciting and and, and, and motivating, but could feel devastating at the same time, and could feel disheartening at the same time. Um, and to receive the kind of help that we'll get into, that you receive, and the type of support that we'll see, family, you'll see what I'm talking about. The type of support that you have from a diverse array of people, from right. old, young, right. white, Asian, black, that actually did it, that it actually took to make it work. Right. You know what I mean? And some people may look at it like a small thing. Oh, he's just a barber. You know what I'm saying? But let, let, let's just start with that. What does what does barbering itself mean? To, mean to Kevin? Barbering to me is a lifestyle. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's some people look at their job, their job is just a job. But to me, barbering is is way more than just cutting hair. You know, you find yourself in situations. You find yourself talking to different people, and you can make or break the situation based on what you say. You know, people come to you for advice all the time. You know, and you can say some negative, or you can say some positive. You, I mean, barbering should always be taken seriously, but delicately, in certain ways. When you think about the people that you touch every day, and this is a town that I learned that if you want some positive, these people will get behind you. You know what I mean? As long as they know you on some positive, yes, you gotta. Of course, you gotta prove yourself. You know, you in, find in yourself any situation, in a position, position where you gotta prove yourself. But once you prove yourself and you st stand in integrity, right, 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 bro, right, you get the key to the city. And 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 you a hundred percent right that it does take a proving yourself. It does take, um, and kind of like we talked about the other night is. When you initially meet someone, mm -hmm. they're gonna have a perception of you. That's right. We, we, we in the town where, like you said, they they never even seen a black person, and, and it's kind of weird to hear in this day and time right. that people never you never you never seen a black person. <laughs> Come on, brother. Like you've been to you the Walmart, bar. right, you know right, right. But 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 it's the honest to God truth because they farm families and That's right. they raise their own food. That's right. So they don't have a need to be in your environment. Right. And so. It, it was so amazing even last night to have so many people coming through the shop that I and, and that we were talking about that were raised that way but want to learn about it. Yeah. With an honest intention. Right. Like if we can we can kind of take that kind of offensive when it's not an offensive thing. Mm -hmm. You don't know no better. Right. And it kind of develops from a uh uh um uh, anger or, or confusion to a compassion like oh man you really don't know no better that's right. sit on the come, come over to the house we gonna that's fix right. you some greens and then we go we gonna talk about this you thing. know what plays a big role to television Perfect. television social media Absolutely. that type Absolutely. of thing you know Absolutely. if you if you, if you think about it if you never really been around black people Absolutely. the only thing you got to judge black people off of is what you see on TV Absolutely. and that is such a terrible <laughs> <laughs> example of who we really are yep, yep. as a whole yep. you know what I'm saying yep but like you talked about the other night having that understanding that I represent my race that's right especially in the place where your race isn't well represented that's right where there's not an array of people for them to see that all oh, they not all the same that's some right. are just like that that's right but all the ones they run into is one way and you know you don't have a responsibility to say, hey, yeah, I'm gonna still be me. Right. I'm not gonna try to talk with a different vernacular. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No doubt. But I am gonna present myself with integrity. That's right. With character. That's with right. Honesty. Mm -hmm. with charisma. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what we are charismatic, charismatic people. That's right. So why be anything else? That's right. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's beautiful. Okay. I I, I could I'ma just say it. You know what Please, I mean? This, like this is the vibe. When I got here Coming from Chicago or Harvey, Illinois, Harvey, Illinois. Shout out represent. Harvey, Har forever. Uh, I just felt like the black people, the African American people that was here, were like just dusty, <laughs> not well groomed at all, bro. Right, right, right. Like you know, and where we come from, we used to being well groomed. You, you know, here it just, I just felt the need. I felt like, you know, what I'm saying. They need some attention, just like, you know, the the Caucasian people go to cross cutters or, uh, you know, one of those chains and get taken care of. You know what I'm saying? We needed to. It was it was a demand. You know, it was a, one barber shop in the whole city, and it's being ran by a Caucasian yeah. woman. Yeah, you know, that was, was true. Like, 
Was, she gave my first job. If she see this, shout out to Lori. <laughs> right, she right, She gave my right. first job, but I mean, it wasn't filling the void. And from just no. what I saw, and, and and for what we knew, it could be. For what we saw, if, if we walking in the store and we see a haircut, yeah, he got a fade, right. but I know I as could a, get him crispy. Yeah. As, as another black man, and as a to barber. see another black man with a bowl, yeah. because that's all he could get, right. was a problem. For, for that's him. right. And, and Facts, so, bro. <laughs> some people, some people looked at it like a negative, but like you said earlier, some people saw it as an opportunity. If I got the right intentions, right. I got the right mind frame, integrity, then man, this is a. There's enough of us here to eat. Right. You know what I mean? And another thing, just being from a bigger city, you find even in Harvey. You know what I'm saying? You find several barbershops. You know what I mean? You competing against other barbershops. I seen no competition. You know what I'm saying? I seen untapped land. You know what I mean? Where I, I, I can plant my feet and we can establish our own. That's it. When you hit the streets, when you first got in Appleton, what did, what did you see in, as far as race relations went? In law enforcement and blacks in Appleton? Uh, a lot of racial profiling by the police, you know. Um, my first six months here, you know, I was getting pulled over several times, you know. They, they pulled me over for, you know what I'm saying, a, a air freshener hanging in the in a rear view oh, mirror. You know, whatever they could pick a, your car apart and, and, and pull you over for it just because you're black. When I first, the first, the very first time I got pulled over, I said I had the crown vid. I remember you know the crown vid. I still had the uh, exactly. Illinois plates on it. Police pulled me over and asked me, "So what are you doing in our wonderful town of Appleton?" Wow! Imagine that. Wow! No, I, being here, I can Man. I can believe they said it, but that's straight. They hearing it now, being gone is so Man, audacious. That's, right? that's, Why would you ruin our wonderful country. town? <laughs> right. But they, I mean, right away they assume that you up here selling drugs. Right. You know what I mean? Because a lot of, that's when they see a lot of, you know, a lot of people trafficking drugs from Absolutely. Chicago Absolutely. to here, from Absolutely. Milwaukee to here. Absolutely. But to be honest, for their demand. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole other story, though. You bring, they bring you drugs don't want up for them. Because right. it's not enough of us to even feed the supply that they, I remember, I remember how people looked at it. People who was in the game that way mm -hmm. looked at Appleton coming from the walk in Chicago, especially with the way people was charging different for stuff, the way right. the, the, the way that they was able to access stuff right. up here. You right. know, and being in the barber game, you hear it all. Mm -hmm. Let's just be clear. Any barber know, people, you, you know everybody, everybody's what's going, you know what's in the street. If you want to know what's happening, talk to your oh, local barber. That's right. right? And so Closest we, to the street you could get. We understood, <laughs> we understood how people were looking at this environment, like, whoo, it's sweet. Right. I'm gonna get it, bro. That's right. And they was though. Right. So there was a perception that all of y'all coming up here looking at our wonderful town, right. like it's sweet. Right. And here we go. You know what I'm saying? And that came into some serious issues with us. So this is the spot, bro. Yeah. This, this, yeah. Quite a quite quite a bit went down in this one, man. Quite man. a bit went down in this one. Right. And so this house is pretty significant. Yeah. To, uh, I was actually living here with you. Yeah. Family, yeah, yeah. We go th when I say we go through <laughs> together, we go through together. Right? <laughs> so we was living here. Right. And um, cutting, like you was talking about, uh -huh. making it happen. Tell us about what, what, what went down. So we out here, but we out here that one day, we messing with a car or something. I remember. We was on the Chevy, right, washing right, the car. Right, right, washing the car. All of a sudden, look down the block. Coming from down the block, a whole line full of officers come marching down the block with the with the thing to knock the door down Absolutely. and all but they that they had stuff. automatics they they had they had semi-automatic rifles you remember the first thing we said are we being pumped i swear <laughs> listen listen family 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 <laughs> we i'm sitting are we being, they, they running the van pulls up in front of it man they come over here one of the neighbors or somebody, or they say they have reasons to believe we were selling drugs. Absolutely. So and they, that's that traffic we was talking about. It, that's the traffic, you know what I mean? So they come here, to get us all on the ground, you know what I'm saying? Took the old lady, bruised the old lady up, throwing her uh, on the I ground, remember. went through everything Absolutely. in the whole house, flipped it upside Absolutely. down. When they finished doing that, they went to the garage, flipped that upside down. 
Uh, Looking for drugs. And, and if you look around, family, just just, just kind of show them around, family. This this neighborhood right here, we was we were we were the only black people on the block. Right, the only black people. And so for them to have us, and I remember vividly, I'm on the front porch. By now right. they didn't got you over here. They separated. They, got, they separated. <laughs> family, they got they got me on the porch, right? And I'm just pissed off and embarrassed because right. we on full display. All the neighbors outside. You know what I'm saying? They made a scene. Not they, to mention spent tons of taxpayers' tons money of ta for something for an operation that. And, 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 and did they find anything, bro? Anything? Not, not nothing. And so that that profiling can get serious. Yeah. When you really just trying to be an honest business. And, and that's exactly what it is, bro. Profiling. If 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 a white boy was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. They would, they would respect that he running a business. Not to even mention, if you remember, when we moved on the block, and when I realized the shop had to close, I went door to door and knocked on everybody's door. Oh, true. You know what I mean? So First, I knocked aware. on their door and told Absolutely. them that we got a shop on college. Absolutely. And then when I had to move ship here, I went and made sure it, everybody, everybody know, know, like, if you need a haircut, just stop by the Absolutely. house. Absolutely. You know, I, Absolutely. I'm thinking I'm being a good neighbor. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. But that, it, it, didn't, it didn't turn out that way. Yeah. It, was, it was ugly. It was ugly, real but, ugly, bro. I mean, to some people that could be traumatic, man. Yeah. And to some people, you know what I mean, that'll make you pack your stuff and say, yo, I'm out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even when I left the AZ, bro, I was like, Kate, <laughs> don't don't go. I mean, right. don't stay. You right. need you need to come on and, and, right. and get with us, right? But yeah, I, I told you I got stuff to do here. I first. got stuff to do first. You know what I mean? And and me personally, I know that that can't be done without a team. Oh, Ex most definitely. Especially in this type of environment where race is an issue. That's and right. And you need multicultural support to right. make your business work. Right. right. And so a team that you may have in Chicago may not work in a place like this because there's a certain etiquette, there's That's a right. certain mentality, there's right. a certain understanding that has to be made. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about the other night, you know, if one of the barbers that's in this new shop, well, we're setting this certain standard, right? right? Go to the club, in this type of town, they're going to say, oh, that's dude from the barber shop. That's right. So that, like you talked the other night, you represent your race. In this shop, you represent your family because right. we become a family, right? right? And you, if you represent your family in a certain way, you making a business that's multi supported by multicultural support that's right. look bad. Right. So talk to us about who's on your team and why they're on your team. I got my brother, my, my number one main man, Wood the Barber, the most loyal, uh, Peter Barber. Uh, another loyal young man, you know what I mean? Right. I call him the young OG. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> young, young old OG. school. He really got an old school mind, but he, 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 what is he, maybe 27? 28, something like that. Yeah, we got D the Barber. D is a brother from another mother. And believe it or Absolutely. not, I only known D, what, three years? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he came at the right time when we were trying to build the team. Absolutely. Make the team strong. Absolutely. Then we got Gilbert the Barber. Mm -hmm. You know, Gilbert the Barber, he, you know, that's that's my that's my guy. He a work in progress. We mm -hmm. still working on him a little bit. He's one of the newer barbers, you know what I'm saying? But he is, I'm learning that he can be a team player. Absolutely. And that's all I push with the team, with the family. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That you got you part of something big. Absolutely. And you got to represent us all well. Us Just, all. Us all well. You know what I mean? It's about accountability. Ooh. And that's a word I like that you hit on that word, <laughs> accountability. Accountability. I like, I like that you hit on that word, accountability, because some people have such a hard time. It's so easy to say, man, what y'all need to be doing. Right. But it's hard to come to the table and say, hey, Ken, LK family, right. I've been really messing up. Yeah, uh, my name is Anthony. Um, I've been here for two weeks, and um, it's a blessing for um, the barbers to let me have this job. I think the barbershop's about you know having fun, and talking, and being around your peers, and just learning from these guys. Um, it's a blessing. And, um, I think about all these barbers like walking, wishing them. You know, I learn from them every day. Everything they do. How the way they cut hair, you know what I'm saying? How the way they carry themselves, I respect that about them. Uh, I love this barbershop. But I'm downstairs below table in the lower level. Um, I'm opening up my salon. This is Karan. She's going to be my, one of the stylists up in the salon. She be snapping y'all. She be yeah. like, 
So if you ever in Appleton, Wisconsin, come into Taper's Barbershop and come downstairs. That's where I be at if you want to be cracking up and stuff and get your stuff done right. And if you want your eyelashes done right. <laughs> but no, excuse my phone because I'm recording for my channel right now. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Kay has been a very beneficial friend. Um, just all over. I had a real passion to really get into the game. And at the time, I didn't have nobody to really guide me in. So he was the first person I really met in Appleton. Um, at the time, he was working uh, out of his basement at the time. So I would, I would get out of school, out of barber school, go to his basement, work on different haircuts, uh, different lineups and different techniques. Um, so he kind of really OG fathered me into the game. You know, he's like a real big homie. I look up to him. Uh, the question was asked, uh, what does K to Barber mean to me? Uh, what he means to me is an extended family. Extended family. Uh, he's a brother that I've, I've grown to know, grown to love, uh, respect. Uh, he, means a, he means a lot to me, personally. And, I, and he also means a lot to the, to the community. Um, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's pretty much one of the pillars to the community. All right, well, to me, uh, Kay is a mentor, a leader, a brother, a friend. Like, even before I started working here, when I was in school, like, if I had any questions cut here, or just in general, like, then, you know, I feel like I can always come to him, you know what I'm saying, about anything. He helped me with tips on cutting hair and everything. And, uh, Personally, like, I think he's a staple in this community. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need barbershops like this in this community. You know, to help the youth and you know, empower, empower the community, empower the youth. Kay the Barber is my brother from another mother. Um, we are co-owners of Taper's Barbershop. Um, I have known Kay since 2001, since I moved to Appleton. Um, he has helped me tremendously throughout the years with my daughter being a single father for so many years. Um, he was my inspiration for being a barber. I saw him cutting hair for years, then I decided to cut hair, and he helped me the whole way. Um, him and his wife, you know, helped me with my daughter while I was in uh, cosmetology school, getting ready for the barbershop experience. And he's been um, just genuinely uh, kind, uh, willing to give you the shirt off his back. Um, peace to my brother Kay. What we want to get to next is because we're talking about, you know, Having, having that support of those unlikely communities, right, in this area. Talk to me about some of that unexpect, unexpected support. What I found, though, you would think in a town like this, bro, that the black people that's here will stick together, you know? And that's not what I learned here, you know? I, I expected support, more support from the black community here, and that's not what I found, you know I what I'm saying? That. I found you know, uh, the, the, you know, of course, I, I, I got to know majority of the black people here, and it was Quickly. a lot of it was a lot of hating, mm -hmm. it was a lot of backstabbing, it was a lot of he ain't go do this, he ain't go make it. Mm -hmm. You know, it seemed like other members of the community supported us more wow. than our own did That's here. True though, you know what I mean. Even and, in the races, propaganda it, we were dealing with around it, there was support. Like even with Cozy Corner, the same thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah, the same, like you were saying the other night. But I could fry my own chicken. That's what they say. You know what I mean? What but in all actuality, they not they don't, they rather downgrade a black business than support. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was telling somebody the other day, you never hear or you never see McDonald's make your food wrong every time. They right. put the cheese on top of the burger, right. mustard on the bottom of the burger, right. and throw your fries in upside down. And you ain't never seen nobody on McDonald's Facebook or social media pages blasting. Not at all. But let Cozy Corner give you cold food. One time. You own it. You own it. 
You know and, and you go tell everybody you know. Stop gossiping. Stop you know what I'm saying? saying? Absolutely. And you go tell everybody you know. And you go tell everybody you know. But there was some unlikely people though who right. came out to, to really to really show their support for you, man. And I saw it firsthand. That's true. And one of the main reasons that is though, bro, is because um, a town like this, in order to have a successful business, you got to make it to where everybody is welcome. Absolutely. It can't just be. Absolutely black owned for black people only absolutely. you know what i'm saying like you know like you see in the shop and you know because you cut up here too absolutely we cut more white people and more asians and mexicans absolutely. Then than, we, than we cut black people at 100%, all too. 100%. you know what i mean so i think that's one of the keys to success in a place like this you got to have a business that everybody is welcome Hi. just wanted to tell you a little bit about my interaction with the king uh, started out a couple years ago and uh, I was thinking that I wanted to get to know some of the folks that are different than the main culture in our community and uh, I was wondering how am I going to take and make those connections. I saw the barber shop and uh, so I looked across and he said I got the first chair in that barber shop over there. So I said sure because uh, it was that I was hoping to find a way to go in and try to exposed my ignorance of the black culture and I thought I could maybe learn something from the guys in there and uh, that was the start of our relationship. Welcome back family. I hope that you enjoyed these clips. I hope you enjoyed what people had to say. But bro, just kind of wrapping it up because we're going we're gonna to end this thing out. But talk to us. So now we got tapers. Tapers barbershop. barbershop. Taper you know what I mean? Killing it. Shout out to tapers. Shout out to tapers. <laughs> but talk to us about what tapers is doing now. The community. I know you guys got a mentorship program. I know right. you guys are doing a ton. You know, we. I remember the block parties. Right. So talk to us a little bit about the community work and the efforts that bring that support from everyone. Um. Well, one thing I learned is that you got to give back. You just can't just take take from people without giving them nothing back. Mm -hmm. So we try to always do block parties. We do a uh, back to school block party. Um, we actually turned it into a read to cut event now. Okay. So um, kids come in, they read a book, they get a free haircut, they get school supplies. Wow. You know what I mean? That wow. type of thing. Um, it's been going real good. I remember how the block parties used to be, though. I'm talking about a full <laughs> carnival. I mean, and we, it, it wasn't just us doing it. Right. I remember the sponsors that we had. I remember right. Walgreens donating right. backpacks. And where you're from and where I'm from, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That integrity, that 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 heart, right. the love. I remember you said this year, mm -hmm. everything I'm moving in love. In love. I'm doing it in love. Everything. And and, and moving in love, man, it, it makes it so much easier it to receive it. That's right. You know That's what I'm right. saying? It People, diffuses a lot of come things, on, man. bro. How you gonna be mad at me when you, I love you? <laughs> you really, you really don't wanna be mad because I love you. Right. You that makes you a real ugly person. Oh man, you so you nasty. Know. <laughs> you so nasty. And so bro, from the bottom of my heart, from Vibes TV to the world, <laughs> I appreciate you for being no a man of integrity, bro. My man. A man that's standing on principle, man. Right. And doing something outside of himself. Right. And that's huge to me, bro. And so Vibes TV, we salute Kate. Give me something, bro. All love. Catch the vibes, man. Catch we the out vibes. Of here.